I can't believe it's already December, but here we are. <laughs> and here we are in front of my Christmas tree because it's festive and, and bright and, and twinkly and doesn't it look nice? Uh, so this is my November wrap up. I read seven books in November and uh, let's just get right into them, shall we? The first book I read in November was Let Me Lie by Claire McIntosh and I gave this three out of five stars and I'm really thinking that thrillers are just not for me. I think I'm just not a thriller person. I love mysteries, but when they like eke over into that like thriller genre, I just, I haven't liked any thrillers that I've read. Uh, so this one, it's about a woman who has lost both of her parents in like the last two years and both of their deaths were ruled a suicide. But it says right on the cover of the book that, uh, was it suicide or murder? Neither. <laughs> so it's like you go into the book knowing that, you know, the cover, unless it's lying to you, has says that it is neither murder nor suicide. So there are only so many other things that could have happened to her parents. And I just didn't connect with any of the characters. I guessed the twist. Like, not exactly, but I, I saw the twist coming. And when it did arrive, I was just like, that's, yeah, I saw that one. Um, and I just, every time I read a thriller, I think that these people, none of this would happen to them if they would just get their shit together. Like, if they just got all their shit together and worked on their issues, then none of this plot would be happening. But I guess that's, I don't know, the point of, like, a, a domestic thriller. Um, so maybe it's just domestic thrillers that I don't like. Anyway, <laughs> this one, I think it was uh, well-written and nicely paced, although there was, like, a, a B-plot for a side character that I just, like, did not care about at all. And I'm like, just tell me what's happening in this mystery. I don't care about this other guy. And I think a lot of the reviews are like, oh, I love the plot with the other guy. And I'm just like, okay, so this is just not the book for me. But if you have any suggestions for like great thrillers, let me know because I want to figure this out. If I just hate all thrillers or have I just been picking up ones that just don't resonate with me. So the second book I read was Lethal White by Robert Galbraith. This is JK Rowling's pseudonym. And this is the fourth book in the Camorn Strike mystery series, not a thriller. I don't think this is a thriller. It's a mystery. There's a difference. Um, so I did like this one. I gave this four out of five stars. I think it is one of the weaker ones in the series when it comes to the mystery, but it, when it comes to the main characters and like their personal lives, like I think this is one of the best ones. Also forever mad that they changed the cover design because all the other ones match and this does not. Uh, and it's also huge. Like, I think that J.K. Rowling is incapable of writing a short book anymore. She wrote a couple of short Harry Potters and now she's done. Now everything that she writes has to be gargantuan. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the mystery in here, I think, was pretty weak. Like, I really didn't care about the mystery so much. Um, I thought the last two were a lot more tightly written than this one. Uh, but I love the characters in this book. So of course I'm gonna like the book that is more about their characterization and like their personal lives and stuff. I'm not gonna go too much into the plot of this since it is the fourth book in the series. Uh, but if you have not read the Kamor and Strike mystery series and you like mysteries, then I, uh, I would say check them out because I really like them. I know some other diehard mystery fans don't like them, but I, you know, I can't account for everybody. <laughs> then I read Every Heart a Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean and McGuire. And these are two novellas, but I listened to them on audiobook. And these are definitely worth the hype. So if you're a frequenter of booktube, you'll know that these have gotten, you know, the rounds. Everyone talks about these books. And I think they're definitely worth it. These are great. Um, they're like perfectly, they're the perfect length because they're not too long. You know, Shauna McGuire just like says what needs to be said in the book and then it ends and it's great. So these are fantasy books that are a play on portal fantasies. So like Narnia, Alice in, Wonder uh, Alice in Wonderland and what happens to these kids when they go through the portals and when they come back. And I think they're great for both people who grew up on portal fantasies like me. <laughs> and also they're great as like a social commentary kind of thing because it's all about like 
fitting into different worlds and having to uh, mold yourself to the expectation of the world that you suddenly find yourself in. And I think that is a great allegory for like growing up and fitting into a box that society has put out for you, especially for uh, young women or pretty much anybody who's not like a straight cis male. (laughs) Because uh, it, it really shifts what box you're supposed to fit in as you grow up. Just take an example of a young girl, you know, she is supposed to fit in a certain box in grade school and when she gets to high school, everything is different, you're supposed to fit in a different box and that is almost go- like, that's almost like going through a portal and finding yourself in a whole nother world and you're just like, hey, I just figured out the rules of this last world, why are you changing the rules on me right now? And also, if you find yourself in a world where you don't fit and don't want to fit, that is a big problem for you. So (laughs) these books like kind of covered that and they have like a great cast of characters. Every single character is like really different and unique. Um, It's got some great representation in it. And when I read the second one, Down Among the Six and Bones, I didn't think I would like that one as much as the first because it is a prequel about some of the characters that show up in the first book. And I was like, I don't know if I want to read a prequel. I want to know what happens next. I don't know if I want to know what happens before. But it turns out that I did, and I really liked the prequel. And there's a third one out now that I'm waiting to come up on uh, the library. I have a hold on. I have a hold on it at the library. And I think a fourth one is coming soon. So these are great. Worth the hype. I gave them both four out of five stars. Then my friend loaned me the uh, Lara Jean trilogy, the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. And I gave this whole series four out of five stars because I just, I just loved them. <laughs> They're great. They didn't uh, rock my world or change my life, but they did really entertain me and like bring me back, bring me back to my, to my youth. I think I'm one of the last people on booktube who reads YA to read these because these have definitely made the rounds in the YA booktube and they're great. The main character, Lara Jean, is just like the sweetest little dummy. (laughs) Like she's so nice (laughs) and you just want to like be her friend and be like you know tell her say this nice forever don't let the world grind you down Laura Jean (laughs) be sweet forever uh but yeah so when the Netflix movie came out I watched that several times like in a row because it was great and just a little like brain candy that I needed uh and then my friend had all the books and she's like let me loan them to you and you can read them and I'm like thank you so thank you Melanie for loaning these to me I love them so much if you don't know the plot of these is it starts off with Lara Jean writes letters to her crushes when she just needs to like sort of get it out of her system and she puts all these letters in a hat box and they get mailed out to her crushes oops so now all these boys like discover that you know she had a crush on them and one of them proposes like hey why don't we have this like fake relationship to make my ex-girlfriend jealous and for you to like not have to deal with the other boys that you wrote letters to and that goes as about as well as you expect it to (laughs) so that's like the inciting incident of this book but they're really more about like growing up coming of age figuring out like your first love and you know, school and things like that. They're really sweet and great and cute and I just I just loved them. I just loved all the characters. So a few things that I will say about them is that I'm glad that I read them when the whole trilogy was out because the first one ends on a cliffhanger and I would not have been able to wait for the second book. I would have been so angry. Um, and then there's a few things I want to say about the third book, um, but if you have not read these and you don't want spoilers, then stop watching. Okay. All right. So if you don't care about spoilers or if you've read this book, then um, the things that I will say about this one is that I really thought the first two wrapped up nicely. Like I didn't think that we needed a third one. Uh, And the author didn't either because she has said that uh, she wrote this one because the fans just really wanted to spend more time with the characters. And I found that I did too. Because when I started reading this, I was just like, I don't know what else could happen, you know, because I feel like we wrapped things up as a story really nicely in the last two books. 
but it's you know just about her um on her journey to college and all the things that she has to deal with in like this transition from high school to college moving from one societal box to another and i think that's great for a ya novel because uh college is the first time when you're able to figure out things for yourself and when you're supposed to figure out what's best for you but so many people come at you with all these different like things you're supposed to be doing and Lara Jean has to deal with that in these book in this book and I really think that's a great subject matter for YA and it you know took me back took me back to the days when I had to figure it out myself and parts of this book are so uncannily similar to like my own situation back then that it was just like ridiculous when I was reading it and I'm just like oh god I know like I know how this ends because I did it myself <laughs> um so yeah the spoilers to that is uh I too went to a college like three hours away from my high school boyfriend and we continued to date and uh everything was fine <laughs> Long distance is doable, especially when you have phones and computers. And uh, a lot of people had opinions about that and thought that our grades would suffer and stuff. And it's just like, I'm here to tell you that our grades were fine. <laughs> and we stayed together and now we're married and everything turned out great. So moral of the story is you can keep dating your high school boyfriend and eventually marry him and buy a house and put up a Christmas tree like that one. Just saying it's, it can happen. It can happen, you guys. Uh, so yeah, when I was reading the book and when people would tell Lara Jean, like, oh, you made, like, mm, you're doing long distance. I just wanted to be like, shut up, you guys. Let them figure it out. Like, you know, they're turning 18. They're adults now. Just like, let them figure it out. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. I love the books. I'm glad she wrote a third one. And uh, that's all the books that I read in November. So that brings me up to 99 books for the year. It's crazy. I have never read that many books in a year. I am currently reading number 100 right now, and I am so, like, stupidly proud of myself. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video, and until my next one, happy reading, nerds. I don't know if I want to have... I don't know if I want to have... I don't know if I want to know... Oh, God. <laughs>